Hi, welcome to Learning Monkey. I am Raghu here. In this class, we'll discuss about the Elgamal crypto system. This is one of the asymmetric key cryptography system. In our previous classes, we already discussed one of the cryptography system, cryptography asymmetric system, which is RSA. And we have discussed some concepts of exponential and logarithms and some basic concepts of group theory. Please watch those classes and come back here because we are going to use all those concepts here in this class. The link for the playlist is provided in the description below. Coming to today's class. So the exponential and logarithmic problems which we discussed here in our previous classes, we are going to use here. The entire concept is based on that. So what happens? Let's refresh the concept. Suppose e1 r and p value is given here p means prime number e1 power r mod p is equal to e2 suppose if e1 r and p values are given identifying e2 is very very easy because it it is an exponential problem we can apply fast exponential method we can do it in deterministic time means polynomial time our systems can easily do that thing. But once E1, E2 and P values are given, identifying R is very, very difficult because it is a logarithmic problem. So based on this fact, we are going to use this fact inside Algamal system. So these discussions made previously in our previous classes. Hoping that you already know why this is exponential problem and all those things. Now coming to this crypto system. First, we need to understand in our asymmetric key cryptography, the receiver is going to generate the public keys and private keys and public keys are sent publicly to the sender and sender is going to use those keys and he is going to do encryption. So now how keys are generated in our uh, in this crypto system? Let's try to understand. So what happens here is we need to select a large prime number. Prime number means large prime number means it should contain at least 1024 bits means at least 300 digits. That much of big prime number you have to select. From this prime number you generate a group Z P star comma multiplication. You already know what's this Z P star group means. And we have done some examples previously. Based on that, we are not explaining what this ZP star means. From this group, we have to randomly generate a D value. And from this group, we have to generate a primitive root. We call it as E1. So what happens here? We are randomly generating a D value and we are taking a primitive root value E1 from this group ZP star. Using this E1, D and P, we are generating E2. E2 equal to E1 power D mod P. So the what receiver is going to generate? He generated E2. So why, why? E2, E1 and P is given. Identifying D is difficult because it is a logarithmic problem. E1, D and P is given. Identifying E2 is easy because it is an exponential problem. So that's why that's why E2, E1, P are given as public. What's the public key? E2, E1 and P is taken as public key. And D is considered as private key because using these three identifying D is very, very difficult. It is a logarithmic problem means it is going to take exponential time. Exponential time means uh, it is going to take uh, 10 to 15 years to solve that. If you, are, if you are having a big computer or any system, you are going to take 10 to 15 years to find D value. That much difficult, that much difficult it is. These basics discussed previously. So that's why E1, E2 and P is given as public keys. And one more important point you need to understand here. E2 equal to E1 power D mod P means indirectly indirectly e1 power d d value is there in the e2 
means indirectly d is d, the value d is sending to the sender he is going to use the d value indirectly this point you need to understand because based on this our entire system encryption and decryption is uh, done now let's try to understand how encryption and decryption is done in our crypto system during the encryption the sender is going to generate a random number r so this is not happen in our rsa system rsa system sender is not going to generate a random number but here the sender is also generating a random integer r from our group zp star he is means it is secret only to the sender sender is going to use that r value using this r value sender is going to do this e1 power r mod p equal to c1 so sender generated a new value c1 using e1 r and mod p so even if, if it is given e1 r and p identifying c1 is exponential problem but c1 e1 and p is given identifying r is logarithmic problem so r cannot be used if the hacker identified c1 so that's why that's why he means what he has done indirectly if c1 is given to the decryption indirectly he is having the value of r inside it the same it has done here e2 is given to the sender means indirectly he has provided the d value inside e2 the same thing sender is generating a random number r indirectly he is providing that value to the receiver by generating c1 now what the sender is going to do here is uh, he is going to generate c2 also c2 is the actual masking happens here means uh, the actual encryption is going to be done here what he is going to do e2 power r multiplied by here p means uh, plain text he is going to multiply plain text with uh, e2 power r mod p the actual masking means the actual encryption happened here c2 is having the actual data so, so sender has generated c1 and c2 and c1 and c2 values are sent to the receiver now once the receiver received the c1 and c2 value he is going to do decryption so from this c1 and c2 value he has to generate the plain text p how he is going to generate the plain text p let's try to understand he is going to do this c2 multiplied by c1 power d whole inverse c1 power d whole inverse mod p he is going to generate the plain text p so why why we are getting this c2 multiplied by c1 power d whole inverse from this why we are generating plain text p this is the point we need to understand let's try to de uh, let's decode it what's there inside c1 what he has done indirectly he has kept e1 power r so that's why decryption is going to use c1 c1 power d means from c1 we are having e1 power r so that's why c1 power d means e1 power r d we generated because d is there with the receiver he is going to use a c1 power d means e1 power r d whole inverse similarly c2 means what's there inside c2 e2 power r mod p multiplied by p here p means plain text so inside c2 we are having e2 power r multiplied multiplied by plain text but what happens inside e2 in the e2 indirectly he has sent d value e1 power d so that's why e2 power r means e1 power r d see here look at here e1 power r d e1 power r d whole inverse from our basics of group theory and uh, these are inverse elements cancelled out with mod p you are going to get 1 x x inverse mod p you are going to get a one value because here inverse element here identity element in multiplication group is 1 and you remind with p p means plain text 
the, this is what happens here in LGML system. Let's try to understand deeper inside this. Indirectly, he has provided D to the sender. The sender indirectly, he has provided R value to the receiver using C1. He has provided D value using E2. So that's why both are using RD as mask. That's why E2 power R means inside E2 we are having D. E1 power DR, E1 power RD is used as mask. E1 power RD multiplied with P means plain text. That's why E1 power RD is our mask. Even though you know E2, you cannot identify D value. Even though you know C1, you cannot identify R value. But these two values are used. R value and D value is used in both in sender and receiver. This is the concept of Elgamal crypto system. Hope you understand how our plain text is done. Again, coming back from the sender, how we are going to decrypt it and how they are going to encrypt it. This concept, hope you understand. If you have any questions regarding the concept, please post your questions in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please subscribe to our channel and press bell icon for the latest update.